a little bit breezy today. We're on the pier. I wanted to run through some of the basics with you. This is Hastings Pier. Uh, a pier offers many advantages uh, in that you're not being blown off the beach like we might be today. If you tuck yourself away out of the wind like I am now, it makes for a little bit of easier fishing, which is what I've got planned today. So I brought this drop net today for the pier. Uh, when you're bringing up fish, you need to hand line it up, or even better, bring a drop net. So I'm putting lugworm on a cascade rig. No need to cast far. A little bit blustery, but sometimes that brings in the dogfish. <laughs> so not too exciting, but it also brings in the bass. This time last year, we had some little smooth hound as well. And they really give that little continental rod a rattle on the rod tip there. And although they're obviously a species that come in shore looking for crab, in recent years, we've done just as well with lugworm. So I'm going to cast out now off the pier, no need to cast too far. <laughs> you spend a lot of time with your back to the wind up on the top of a pier. Uh, weather's quite mild actually. It's about 16 degrees, but this wind can make things really tricky. Uh, so we're just going to start off with a one rod today. It's certainly more helpful when you're uh, fishing in these sort of conditions. Uh, but we'll put another one on in a minute uh, and see how we go from there. <laughs> Always get that drop net ready because if you catch something first cast, you don't want to be doing what I'm doing here, which is fiddling out the tangles. Make sure you've got enough line for low tide as well. I'm going to be a bit close with this. So you can see how these drop nets work. You've just got weighted metal bar loop. Uh, and there's enough in there to get any fish I think I'm likely to catch. Um, it's going to be a bit tricky in the tide though. But we'll put it down ready for something big. So just tucking myself behind this little bench here. Just to get out of the wind. Worth checking on some of these hooks. You see how these hooks have rusted. Uh, you can clean them up with the file I've got in here somewhere. I should have bought a hat. I have brought coffee though. Nice coffee. That wind's picking up. No bite so far. I'll have a rebate of this one. I've just uh, trimmed that bit of squid as well. That is the exact spot I got the smooth hounds this day last year. <laughs> rattle on this rod on the left. So I chose to bring it back in then. Sometimes just leave it and obviously in hindsight that's what I should have done. Uh, so we get that back in with our lug. We are having little little touches of something. What is it? I don't know. <laughs> So no fish, got about an hour and a half, I still haven't managed to get anything for you, and the wind is just incessant, so what I've actually done, if I show you, I'll take this up. I'll put another rod on the other side of the pier, I might change our luck a little bit. This way I'm fishing, well I'm sort of trotting it down tide a little bit, sometimes you pick up the flounder like this, it's a lot easier to fish this side to be honest. Um, but you've got to push into that wind at times, so 
just sort of bumping that one down. You would see a bite on that, even in this wind. Stuff like that can damage the carbon. Good to put down a little bit of towel. This is always going to feel a little bit heavier because you've got to bring it back in against the tide. But At least I'm feeling something on there. <laughs> I still think uh, there is something on here. There's always a chance these seas flounder in this sort of conditions. Ah, we have got something. I've got to negotiate these pylons though. Aha, we have something. Oh. Could a flounder be saving the blank? It could. <laughs> so, as, as what can happen a lot, we've got a little flounder. And they very often save the blank, the flounders. Tiny, not the biggest one, but we haven't blanked. <laughs> Easy enough to just lift that off the pier, isn't it? go a flounder I'll drop that one back uh, what I'll do then I think I've only got about half an hour left so I'm just going to chuck this out to the east side of the pier obviously we had a little flounder there and you can see I don't know well I don't know if this will pick it out but look at the way the waves are coming west to east the southwesterly is pushing it uh, it's going to make for easier fishing for the last half hour or so at least um, and I might just sort of put a big bow in the line and trot that down, so, trot that down tide. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to push into the wind, leave a lot of slack in the line. And although that's braid, that'll still, if I lift the rod tip up, it's just going to bounce down tide. Hopefully, give us last, last chance of getting a half decent fish. So already that line's being taken actually feeling it uh, still bumping up and down so a bit of slack in the line give it 10 minutes then we'll tighten up and see if we got anything don't need the grips on the lead but i can actually feel that even with the kenzaki so the conditions today not good for certain species like place but if you do like place check this video out